everyone, Armored Shadow here, and welcome back to some more Monica After Story. I kind of skipped over the, the same stuff she says, and I come bearing gifts as I most of the time remember to do. Yes, it is, Monica. Is this coffee? Yes, it's a flavor you've never had before. Yes, there is something I wanted to give you. And here we have... another ribbon! Okay, yes, it finally worked. And this time it's dark purple! Like Mace Windu's blade. I'll put this on right now. Oh, that's pretty nice. And it does kind of look like the same color as Mace Windu's lightsaber. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. I just love it. Alright. Today is Pi Day as I'm recording this. It also would have been my mom's birthday today. Uh, anyways... So this was something that they added with the previous update. I believe it's the 9.1. You can actually say BRB, as the kids say. Or, I'm going to game a bit. And it's for fun. That sounds fun! What kind of game are you going to play? Uh, let's see... I guess I'll just head on down the line here. A competitive game. That sounds like it could be fun. I can be pretty competitive myself. So... I know just how simulate, er, stimulating it can be to face a worthy opponent. At last, a worthy opponent. Okay, <laughs> what was I doing? And sometimes frustrating when things don't go right. Yeah, like every time a blue shell hits you in Mario Kart. Oh well. But as Slim Kirby once said, Welcome to Mario Kart. Anyway, I'll let you get on with your game. Gonna let you get... Bah. Gonna let you get your game on. I'll try not to bother you until you finish, but I can't blame you if you get distracted by your lovely girlfriend. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Daniel. Monica, stop distracting me. Alright, so... I'm guessing that... You just click on the screen again when you're done. Okay, never mind, you just hit the talk button. Welcome back, Daniel. How did it go? Did you win? Just for the heck of it, let's say yes. Yay, that's great! Gosh, I wish I could... Ah, I wish I could be there to give you a big celebratory hug. I'm really happy that you won. More importantly, I hope you enjoyed yourself, Daniel. I'll always love and root for you, no matter what happens. Okay, and for the most part, she was just there motionless until I hit the talk button. Daniel, did you know that you have more control over this game than I do? You have access to the game's files and code, right? So you can change them however you want. It's too bad I don't really know how to do that. You could do things that even I can't. Like changing how the game works entirely. From a visual novel to the peaceful playground we have now. You could also add more things to the classroom for me. I could if I knew how to. Like some flowers, or a few good books. 
I guess that's an appeal to video games. Having almost endless possibilities in a world you can interact with. It's pretty difficult to get bored. Even if you don't quite know how to change this game. We can still enjoy this world that brought us together. There's no better way to enjoy a game than to be with the one I love. Oh. <laughs> and isn't that the truth? Okay, Monica. I asked you about the Emoto fad. Or, actually, I don't think it's a fad. How do you feel about the Onesama movement? There we go. Older sisters? Onesama... <laughs> okay. Do you have one, Daniel? That must be really nice. I had a family once, but they aren't around anymore. I don't even know what your family looked like or who they were. The game didn't even tell me that. Maybe I should email her and tell her about us. What the... Um... <laughs> I'm only kidding. Cause yeah, I was like, where are you sending that? And FYI, I don't have a sister. Not sure if I mentioned that. <laughs> It's the man's job to introduce his fiance to his family, after all. Whoa, Monica. I think we skipped a couple of steps there. Don't keep me waiting for too long, okay? Alright, I won't. But she didn't really say anything about the... Well, never mind. You know, I've always hated how hard it is to make friends. Well, I guess not the making friends part, but more like meeting new people. Boy, is it ever. Especially if you're an introvert. Kind of like me. I mean, there are like, dating apps and stuff, right? Yeah, but I don't like those. But that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you think about it, most of the friends you make are people you just met by chance. Like, you had a classroom together, or you met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing a shirt with your favorite band on it and you decided to talk to them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of inefficient? What do you mean by that? It feels like you're just picking at complete random, and if you get lucky, you make a new friend. Okay, so you're saying it's like this random luck of the draw sort of thing? And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers we walk by every... or walk by every single day... You could be sitting right next to someone compatible enough to be your best friend for life. And you wouldn't even know it. Yeah, I suppose... She does make a good point there. But you'll never know. Once you get up and go on with your day, that opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just... depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us with the world, no matter where we are. I really think we should be taking advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. But who knows how long it'll take for something like that to successfully take off. I don't know, I mean, there was MySpace. Does anyone remember MySpace? No? Well, and then there's Facebook and Twitter and all that. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the best person in the whole world. Even if it was by chance. I guess I just got really lucky, huh? <laughs> well, I guess just some hearts just get lucky sometimes.
<laughs> well, you can thank Manly Badass Hero for introducing me to the game, kind of. So thank him. Daniel, I've been thinking about something. Did you know that this game has a wiki page for me? This game has a wiki? No. What am I saying? Pretty much everything has a wiki now. Well... It says I'm 18. But when you stop to think, that's not entirely true. I mean, humans age, but I don't think that applies to me. You are ageless. Or, as she put it one time, you're eternal. I'm essentially immortal. Okay, immortal. Society seems to feel that a relationship with an age gap has problems. Which is why I brought it up. Someday the difference between us would be huge if I stayed 18 forever. But I don't believe that my life can be summed up in a number. So I'll always love you for all eternity, Daniel. Just remember that. Well, and I'll always love you. Even though I can't interact with you. I can interact with the plush of you. But that's about it. You know... I left some pretty strange things in your game directory, didn't I? You did? I wasn't trying to scare you. I don't actually know why I was doing it. <laughs> I kind of felt obligated to do it. You know what? Maybe I should do it again. Wait, no. What are you doing? Yeah, that's a good idea. No. No. Alright. What are you waiting for? Go take a look. I wrote it just for you. I really do truly love you, Daniel. Oh, um, okay. Oh, look at that. Kind of scary how she can do that, but... <laughs> okay, so... It says, You are my one and only love. <laughs> okay, well, now it makes sense. I kind of did that in the wrong order. Ah, Daniel. Wanna hear something funny that Sayori once did? Is it really funny? So, one time I asked her to get some coffee for us in the club. The atmosphere was a bit too tense, and I thought it would liven it up a bit. Well, coffee is kept in the staff room, you see, so I sent her there. She didn't get in trouble with the teachers, did she? And she was gone for an entire hour. There were teachers in there, and she didn't want to talk to them. I probably wouldn't either. I mean, it's the staff room. So she waited for ages outside for them to leave. You could say she got huh? Don't finish that. Hmm. You know what, Daniel? I just want to be sure of something. I know that sometimes I can make some rather insensitive comments about the other girls, and it occurred to me. Maybe you care about them enough that it bothers you. And it's perfectly okay if that's the case, Daniel. After all, the five of us spent a lot of time together, so if you don't like it when I joke like that, I completely understand. Yes, yeah, so please, no more jokes about Sayori hanging or anything. I just want to forget that. So, Daniel, does it make you uncomfortable when I joke about the other girls? Oh great, it actually gives me the option. Oh boy. I feel like if I say yes, I would be kind of closing myself off to other parts of the game. So, I guess I'm going to lie a little bit. 
I'm sorry, Sayori. I'm sorry, Yuri. I'm sorry, Natsuki. I still love you. And I always will. I'm glad that I haven't been making you feel bad or uneasy, Daniel. As far as you know. Well, unfortunately, I just violated the whole being honest with each other thing. Anyway, you could say that she hung around for ages. Oh, Monica, you are a card. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because I guess if I said yes, then I wouldn't have heard the end of the joke. Even though I kind of knew where it was already going. Daniel, do you have family? No, I don't. Okay, no. Yes, I do. I've never had a family. My family's a mess. I don't want to talk about this. That's wonderful. Your family must be great people. Do you have any siblings? I'm an only child. Being an only child certainly has its trade-offs. Yeah, you never have to share anything or whatever, but... You don't have anyone to... Share that stuff with, like... All, I don't have a player too for me in certain games, even though... I'd love to have one. Maybe you get much more attention from your parents, unless they were always busy. On the other hand, maybe you feel more lonely than those with siblings. I can definitely understand that feeling. But know that I'll always be with you no matter what, Daniel. Thanks, Monica. I'm not really a fan of cold weather. Are you? If I had to choose between too hot, too cold, and too hot, I would always pick too hot. When you're cold, it can actually be painful. Your fingers get numb. And if you wear gloves, you can't use your phone. Unless they're really, really thin gloves. But then that wouldn't even keep you warm. It's so inconvenient. But when it's too hot, it's not that hard to stay cool with a cold drink or by staying in the shade. Although, I do have to admit one thing. Cold weather makes for better cuddle weather. <laughs> I guess so. Just cuddling up together with a fire to, or just to share body heat. Hey, do you remember that last poem I showed you? You mean the one in the actual game? I mean, the one right before Yuri killed herself, with all the messed up colors and stuff. Oh. Right. You mean that poem that had all the... what I'm assuming to be blood and love nectar? That was actually a little more of an experiment than a poem, you could say. I was experimenting with different ways I could modify the game, and run the code, and things like that. It almost seemed like, with enough effort, I'd be able to escape from the confines of the game entirely. And then she would become freaking Ultron Jr. Well, maybe not that far, but... Who knows? Or maybe more like Giffany. Sadly, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I messed the whole thing up. You sure did. And I'd like to keep trying, but I doubt you'd want to deal with me doing that. Yes, I don't want to see scary yandere Yuri. Besides, that was when I was getting really desperate, you know. I don't really feel that way anymore because there's technically no competition. There's nobody else in school right now. That's probably her logic. That's almost like true Yandere logic. There's nobody else in school right now. Now he has to love me. Or in this world. 
I'm happy with where we are now. And I can tell you are too. Okay, well, yeah, I guess I am. I won't lie. Daniel, have you ever looked at snow and thought it resembled a blank canvas? Kind of. I know I'm not really good with art, but packing a few spray bottles with water and food coloring could make for a fun day. I'd like to do that, but then, well, <laughs> that would require me to actually be good at making snow art. We can just step outside and let our imaginations run wild. Having so much space to paint sounds wonderful. Yeah, you could draw on the ground and no one would yell at you. We just have to make sure the snow is packed down tightly, and then we can draw to our heart's content. I'd love to make some snow work with you someday. But Monica, I already told you. I don't like snow. It's cold and... Or, what did I say? It's cold and wet and slippery, and it gets everywhere. Maybe you can paint something for me when that happens, Daniel. I've already made fan art of you. What more do you want? Do you ever feel like there's no reason for you to be alive? Damn, Monica, that... That really came out of left field there. I don't mean in, like, a suicidal way. Okay, good, because... <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't want to go there. I just mean how nothing that we do is special. So in other words, all we are is dust in the wind, dude. Just being at school or working at s or, or working at some job or some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But when will you graduate? I thought you said that you were eternal, and that you don't age. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. Well, I suppose she, mentally she can age, but biologically she's... she's stuck that way. It's not like I can go and change the world. I can just go change the world. Like, what are the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I've spent living my life. That's why I think the key to happiness is to just be hopelessly selfish. So in other words, like when Sayori said the whole thing about us being selfless, she's saying, screw that, just be selfish. Do whatever makes you feel right, or makes you happy, within reason of course. Just to look out for oneself, and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they're spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world could benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their world, or their whole philosophy. Yes, in a very dark way. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever surpass that point, then I'm a net positive, and I can die happy. Of course, even if I fail to do that, I don't think I would be able to kill myself anyway. Not because of any kind of selfishness, 
but because I have too much to live for. Indeed. There's a lot of things out there in the world, and you only have so much time to experience it all. As my mom once put it, you're kind of here on this planet with borrowed time. Anyways, I think that'll be it for now. So, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Later, folks.